Welcome to Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church, and thank you for being a part of our television ministry. Pulaski Heights is a place of warmth and love, with an outreach mission that extends far beyond our church walls. We have a long tradition of offering our hearts, stretching our minds, and extending Christ's hands to those in need. We are a congregation of hope and an open place of worship that seeks to share the good news beyond the conventional barriers of fellowship. Hi, I'm Britt Scarta, Senior Pastor at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. It is our desire that you will be inspired by today's message of hope for a diverse community in search of God's love.
Will you please join me in the prayer of confession as printed in your worship bulletin? We confess, O God, that we have failed to be the body of Christ. We have lived our lives separately without a sense of union. We have trusted in our own strength more than in yours. We have cared more about temporal things than about things eternal. We have been more concerned for propriety than for truth and more anxious for our own welfare than for world justice. We have talked about the cross without suffering and about love without loving. Forgive us, O oh God, and restore us to our mission in the world. Through Jesus our Lord, amen. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Therefore, God will hear our prayers for ourselves as the church. God never despises the prayers of the faithful. In loving kindness, God will heal our brokenness and make us into a true and everlasting community. Amen. As forgiven people, let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Please be seated. And this morning, I want to introduce to you and welcome the newest members of our Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church family, uh, Jan Patterson and Philip and Carson Wilson, all come to us. They completed our Membership Matters class just this past week. Uh, Jan and Philip come by transfer. Carson comes this morning to make her profession of faith in Jesus Christ. And so, Carson, I will ask you. Uh, these questions, do you truly and earnestly repent of your sins? Do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament? Do you promise according to the grace given you to keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in the same all the days of your life as a faithful member of Christ's holy church? Carson, Carson and the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I ask you this one question. Will you be loyal to Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church and support it with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Then I invite you as a congregation to welcome these wonderful families with the response printed in your bulletin. We rejoice to recognize you as a member of Christ's Holy Church, and we welcome you to Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Thank you, and at the end of the service today, you'll be invited to come forward and welcome these wonderful families. And now I invite the girls and boys in the congregation to meet me here for our lesson for young Christians, as all of us sing.
Good morning, girls and boys. So glad to see you this morning, and I know all of these people are also. And I'm so glad to see our acolytes as girls and boys because I remember when they were sitting on the steps like you all are, and we are glad to have them today also. In a few minutes, you are going to hear a wonderful story. Mrs. Bandy is going to read it from this lectern from the Bible. And you're also going to hear it and do activities around it at Vacation Bible School. I hope all of you are coming to Vacation Bible School. If you are not, as, as soon as church is over today, ask mom and dad if you are registered. And if you are not registered, it's, it's, it's not too late because we want you here. Miss Cindy Burns says it's the most wonderful week of the whole year. And all of us like Vacation Bible School also. This story today is a story that you may have heard before. It's a story about Jesus, and he had been preaching and teaching all day long to thousands of people, they say, who had come out from little towns and from villages, and they had been listening to him and learning. But it was late in the day. It was supper time. And you know what? Many of them were getting hungry. And Jesus was concerned about that. And he turned to Philip, one of his disciples, and he said, where can we go to buy bread for these people? And Philip said, we don't have nearly enough money to buy bread for these people. But another disciple, Andrew, said, well, over here is a young boy who has five loaves of bread and two fish. Now, Andrew also was a little concerned that it wouldn't be enough, but yet Andrew did what he could to help. And boys and girls, I'm going to do something I've never done before, and that is I'm not going to tell you how the story ends because I want you to listen, really, really listen this morning when Mrs. Bandy reads it, and I want you to find out how that story ends. Some of you may already know, but if you don't listen, uh, 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 listen anyway, because you'll learn, you'll learn something else from the story, I promise. Let me tell you one other thing about Andrew. Earlier in the Bible, Andrew had taken his brother Peter to meet Jesus. And Peter was the great disciple who worked for God and helped, and, and God built his church, really, with Peter's help. And so you see, Andrew did small things like, here's a boy with five loaves and two fish, and then he introduced his brother, Peter, to, to Jesus. But these small things made a big difference. And we can do that too. We can come on Sunday morning. We can invite our friends to come with us. We can bring cans of food for the food pantry. There are so many things that we can do to be workers for God. So let's think about that this week, okay? And remember to listen to the story. Will you join me in prayer? Loving God, we give you such grateful thanks for these girls and boys, for what they mean to your church here. And we pray that all of us together, like Andrew, can be a worker for God. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye. See y'all later. See you next week.
be with you. Let us pray. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Loving God, today we come and pray for all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens throughout the world. We pray for other parts of the world, people we will never know because that's part of who we are as your followers. For over 50 million people who are refugees in the world today, fleeing their homes due to hunger, conflict, privation, those in Syria, Pakistan, Chad, Liberia, other parts of Africa, Iraq, the Ukraine, and in Haiti. All throughout the world for those seeking asylum from the burdens they carry and the yokes that they wear. May we bear one another's burdens so that all may share in the liberty of God's loving kindness and live with one another in peace. This morning we offer these names collectively, knowing there are many names not on this list that we carry in our hearts. But we lift these names as our faith community. Our Christian sympathy is extended to Kimberly Ruff and family in the death of her grandmother, Eula Dorothy Dot Renner. Hospitalized recently, Mary Ellen Barnes, Lyrit Burton, Dave Ellis, Andy Fair, Joanne Gladden, Mary Jo Horton, Lee Pitts, Phyllis Rainey, and Paula Watson. We rejoice in our new members that have joined this community of faith, uh, the, the new members that will join in our four services this morning. And we offer joys for all of the pastors around the United Methodist Connection beginning new appointments this morning. And we also realize that in our country, we celebrated Independence Day on Friday, and we remember those who have given their lives for this nation. And lastly, God, we know that you not only hear these prayers, but you also hear the prayers for those that have no one to pray on their behalf. And for that ever presence with them, we give thanks as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You're invited to stand for the reading of the gospel, which is John 6, 1 through 13 in the New Testament. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with the, his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this, is this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for, such of the, for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but of what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragment, fragments left over so nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. On this uh, 4th of July weekend, as we Americans celebrate the independence and freedom that we have as a nation, I feel it's important to acknowledge that it could have gone the other way. We could have lost our freedom or never gained it in the first place. We, we could have been defeated in the American Revolution. We could be under the rule of the British monarchy or, or monarchy of our own making and creation. At the end of the American Revolutionary War, General George Washington was without a doubt, hands down, the most popular person in the former 13 colonies. People loved him. They adored him. So much so that early on, several Continental Army officers, totally disillusioned with the fledgling Congress that had been formed, hatched a plot to make George Washington king to seat him on a new American throne. Of course, when Washington heard this, he was appalled and stunned, and he refused to have anything to do with it at all. George Washington, the father of our country, the first American president, was convinced that the greatest freedom, the greatest freedom comes when power is shared through a representative form of government. A government of the people, by the people, and for the people, as a later president, Abraham Lincoln, would say. And still today, as citizens of a free country, this is our calling, to share the power, to share the wealth, to embrace others, to proclaim, to proclaim that all are created equal. Not just some, not just those who meet with our approval, but absolutely all people. And by the way, as children of God and as disciples of Jesus Christ, this is our high calling as well. I confess to you that uh, I was just a little saddened this past week when on the eve of this great American celebration of freedom and independence, the uh, fair citizens of Murrieta, California, encouraged by their mayor, decided to blockade and prevent three busloads, 140 illegal immigrants, mostly vulnerable women and children, from going to the Border Patrol processing station. They surrounded the buses. They, they screamed, go home, we don't want you here. They waved American flags and they lifted placards that, that said, return to sender. We don't want you here. We've already got enough homeless women and children without you present. We've got enough needs in our community. We have veterans who need to be cared for. We have other needs. We, we can't do it. Just go home. Go back. We don't want you. And I completely understand. I really do, and so do you. We live in a complex world today, don't we? We live in a confusing world, and, and we're never quite certain how we are to create community and build community and share and, and, and offer ourselves to others. We struggle with this. But where... But where the citizens of Murrieta, California were wrong, dead wrong, was their assessment that they could not care for more. Because quite frankly, we live in the wealthiest, most lavish culture in the history of the world. On any given day, we Americans throw away more food than the rest of the world consumes. We are dripping with assets. We are oozing with resources. And so the question is not, are we able to help others? 
But are we willing to help others? Are we willing to move beyond mere words and, and platitudes to actually loving our neighbor, reaching out in a tangible way to help our neighbor? It's a challenging thought. It's a thought that can only be discovered and found by exploring God's Word, the Bible, this this wonderful book. Let me read to you. Um, let me read to you again the first verses of this story. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Ti Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? I know. I know. Contrary to what Reverend Lindsay said to our children, this text, this story does not stir up a lot of excitement for me. I mean, it's the old fishes and loaves, feed the multitude, feed the 5,000 story. I mean, if we've heard it once, we've heard it a thousand times. It's been done to death, hasn't it? Even those who have never darkened the door of a church don't know the Bible stories. They know this one. They know this this story it's just it's tired i my heart sank when i saw that it was the the scripture reading for today and yet if we look at it a little more closely there's something profound about this story something fundamental about this story as a matter of fact this is the only miracle story of jesus that is repeated in all four Gospels. The only one, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all tell this story. And this story of all the stories in the Bible seems to touch on universal themes, the themes of hunger and hospitality. Who among us have never felt a nagging, gnawing hunger in our gut or in our hearts or in our spirits? Who among us have never experienced feeling on the outside that we're looking in, that we're not welcome, that, that hospitality is not extended to us? This story deals with all of these issues. Jesus has just returned from a mission. He's just returned to Galilee from a mission of of healing people, putting together broken lives. He has performed many signs and wonders. That's the term John uses in his gospel for the miracles of Jesus. He calls them signs because they prove who Jesus is in relationship to God. He's come back performing signs and wonders. Jesus is immensely popular in and around Galilee. People love him. They want to make him king. But Jesus is appalled. And he pushes back against that kind of idea. He didn't come to be an earthly king. He came to point us toward a deeper and more profound truth. Another kind of reality. So Jesus returns to Galilee from this wonderful mission. And, and he takes his disciples and they, they cross Galilee. They cross the Sea of Tiberias. And they climb a mountain to find some rest and respite. And time to meditate and regroup. But there is no rest. Because of the popularity of Jesus, the crowd follows. They go around the lake. They cross the lake. Busloads of illegal immigrants are, are pulled into the, to the campground to be processed by Jesus. 5,000 of them to be exact. They're overwhelmed. And quite frankly, before Jesus can do anything effective for this group, they must be filled. They must be fed. They're hungry, it's late, it's, it, it's far away from home, there's, there's little there. They need to be fed. Now, in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, 
they're called the synoptic gospels because they generally flow in the same way they're 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 similar to, to to one another in the gospels of matthew mark and luke what we have is the disciples come to jesus and they say lord how are we going to feed all these people there's just too many that's matthew mark and luke john on the other hand john's gospel takes a totally different tack in john's gospel it's jesus it's Jesus who comes to the disciples, not the disciples to Jesus. Jesus comes to the disciples and says, how are we going to feed all these people? By the way, Jesus already knows. He knows what's going to happen, but, but this is a test. This is a test for his disciples to, 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 to measure their faith. And quite frankly, they don't measure up very well. Philip plays the role of the mayor of Murrieta, California, he comes up, he says, Lord, we've got all these illegal immigrants here. I've done the calculations. I've done the addition. So there's not enough money to buy food. There's, there's not enough food. There's not enough of anything, Jesus. Return to sender. Send them home. And next comes Andrew. Quite frankly, you can read that story any way you like. I, I see Andrew as not much better than Philip. I mean, Actually, I see Andrew's words as sort of tongue-in-cheek. Well, Jesus, I found a little boy here with five loaves and a couple of fish, but hey, it's not enough to feed himself, much less 5,000 people, Jesus. Give it up. We don't have enough. We don't have enough. Do you see the sin? Do you see the sin of the disciples here? It's a sin of a lack of faith. It's a sin that also is all about the practice of a theology of scarcity. A theology of scarcity. We don't have enough, Jesus. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough food. We don't have enough person power. We don't have enough faith. We just don't have enough, Jesus. And quite frankly, it was this theology of scarcity that there's not enough that chased Jesus throughout his ministry. Constantly dealt with it. And I, and I can tell you, in my three decades as a pastor and shepherd of churches, it has been the biggest issue that's always raised by the congregation. We can't build this addition. We don't have enough money. We can't make our budget. We don't have enough money. We cannot send missionaries to Guatemala and Haiti and Russia. We do not have enough money. We've got to scale down vacation Bible school. We do not have enough money. We need to cut the budget. We need to lay off people. We don't have enough money. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. This is the biggest lie that has ever been perpetrated on people of faith. Because the truth is, we do have enough. We have more than enough. As a matter of fact, we have an abundance. We have an overflow. If we are just willing to work with God, to work with God, to build a partnership with God, and to share out of what we have and all that we have that comes from God in this partnership. We have more than enough. We have more than enough. For me, the single most profound moment in John's telling of the feeding of the 5,000 comes near the end. In the other Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we find the disciples handing out the fishes and loaves. They, they distribute them among the people. They meander in and out of the crowd. The disciples feed. The disciples feed the multitude. Ah, but in John's gospel, in John's gospel, it's Jesus who blesses the bread. It's Jesus who breaks the bread. And it's Jesus himself, it's our Lord himself, who distributes the fishes and the loaves to the crowd. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they were satisfied, he told his disciples, 
gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. They filled 12 baskets. When Jesus is the host, no one is ever turned away. When Jesus is the host, there is no difference in citizens and illegal immigrants. When Jesus, when Jesus is the host, all are fed and all are loved. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thanks be to God for the freedom we find in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. In the spirit of the message that we've just heard, I ask you to turn in your hymnals to hymn number 629, which is a wonderful communion hymn, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. And this morning, the choir and myself, we're going to sing the verses, uh, which you'll find about halfway down in the hymn to the end. Um, and I challenge you just to read the text as we sing those. But we're all going to sing the refrain, which the hymn starts with, as you see. Uh, the uh, we will sing it through the first time. You can join us the second time so you'll then know the melody. But before we do that, I just want us to all look at the text on verse number 5, which says, You give yourself to us, O Lord, then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name and truth and charity. May we sing together. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you. by the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share the blood of Christ upon One cup, one loaf, declare our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread. Who 
wants to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest sweet. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord, then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name, in truth and charity. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest sweet. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Amen. As we come to our time of sharing our tithes and offerings, let me remind you, please, to fill out your Connect card and to place that in the offering basket. And will several of you all who are down front do me a favor and, and hold, or in, uh, anywhere, hold up the EFT card, the yellow card. And those are available for all of us to give in this way by electronic fund transfer. And Wayne and I do this, and it's such a wonderful feeling to know that we have paid, our, that we have given, that we have given our offering every month to the church. So I encourage you all to think about doing this and remind those of you who already do that you may place that in the offering plate each Sunday morning as, a, uh, as, your, as your pledge, as your gift for the day. Will you join me please in prayer? Gracious and loving God, we are so grateful to be a part of your kingdom. We are so thankful to be able to share and to give and to help in this church and to be workers for you. Uh, as we give today, help us remember that our gifts make possible Vacation Bible School, youth mission trips, so many ministries in Jesus' name. Help us to give generously. In Jesus' name, amen.
Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is Jesus Christ, in whom your word became flesh and came to dwell among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you destroyed the power of sin and death. You raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant. It's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet table through Christ with Christ in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty God now and forever now we pray together the prayer Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we will receive this sacrament of God's grace poured out for us through the method of intinction by coming down the center aisles with our hands outstretched. The bread will be placed in your hand and then you will dip it into the cup. Uh, there are two stations for intinction this morning and then at either end there is a gluten-free bread for those who would receive by that method. In the United Methodist Church, the table of the Lord is open for all. The table is prepared and you are invited to come.
Christ for you. Thank you for joining us today at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. And I hope you enjoyed our worship service. May the peace, joy, and love of God be with you.